Kathy, Mary here, and we are going to do a up and down problem uh, that has a little bit of a twist to it. So here goes. A helicopter is rising straight upward at 12.5 meters per second. When it is 60 meters above the ground, the package is accidentally dropped out of the helicopter. How much time passes between the package being dropped and it hitting the ground? So let's draw a picture. Here is my helicopter. I kind of like drawing these little stick helicopters. They amuse me. So here we go. We're going to put a little tail rotor on it and some blades. And here we've got our cute little chopper pilot and little baseball cap. And give her a seat, too. There we go. Okay. Now, when this helicopter happens to be 60 meters above the ground, a small package is dropped out of the helicopter. So this package is dropped from 60 meters, and when it's dropped, the helicopter is going upward at 12.5 meters per second. Now, the package, when it's dropped, will have some inertia. It's not going to fall straight down because of the fact that it is in a moving helicopter, and the helicopter is in the process of moving upward. This package is also going to have some upward velocity. So the path taken by the package is going to be something like that. It's going to be sort of a parabolic. It's going to go up, and then it's going to go down again. And my question is, how much total time passes? until the package actually hits the ground. Now, there's a couple different ways of doing it, and we're going to start out using this equation. Total displacement is the original displacement from the rest position, wherever we're going to call that, plus VOT plus 1 half AT squared. All right, and we're looking for time. So the distance um, that it will end up, it's going to end up down here, and I'm calling that x equals zero. That is a displacement of zero. So x is zero. That's where it's going to end. It starts 60 meters above that zero point, and that is in a positive direction. In this problem, we have up and down motion, so we're going to call everything upward positive, and we're going to call everything that happens in a downward direction negative. So it starts 60 meters above ground level, and it's going to start out with a positive velocity of 12.5 meters per second times time, plus one half acceleration of gravity, because the package is, gravity is the thing affecting its motion. In this case, acceleration of gravity is going to be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared because gravity is going to be pulling it downward. So one half a negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. Okay, when I look at this, I can simplify it, and I'm going to end up with 60 meters plus 12.5 meters per second t plus half of negative 9.8 is a negative 4.9 t squared. Now if you look at that, you might go, ah, t is in two different places. How am I going to deal with that? Well, do you remember the quadratic equation? And some of you are going, no, not the quadratic equation, but it's really, really helpful, especially in a situation like this. So to use the quadratic equation, you have to get your equation into a form that looks like this. Zero is ax squared plus bx, x is the thing you're solving for, plus c. So I'm going to take this whole equation and I'm just going to flip it to make it look the same. So 0 equals negative 4.9, and I'm going to use, lose the units because this is going to get confusing enough, negative 4.9 t squared, um, b is plus 12.5 t uh, plus 60 meters. And my quadratic equation, if you recall it, looks like this. The thing you're solving for is negative whatever the b coefficient is, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a. So I'm now going to put my numbers from up here 
into my quadratic. So here goes nothing. The thing I'm solving for happens to be time. Negative b is going to be a negative 12.5 plus or minus the square root of b squared. My b is 12.5, so 12.5 squared minus 4 times a, and a is a negative 4.9, times c, which is 60. All of that divided by 2 times a, and a is a negative 4.9. All right, let's simplify this. So if I take all of this stuff under the square root, and I do some math with it, square it, and then a negative, a negative, this is going to be plus, this Everything under the square root turns into 36.5. So plus or minus 36.5. And then 2 times a negative 4.9 is going, 9 is going to be a negative 9.8. Now you have to do this twice. Once with a positive, once with a negative, and you get two possible results. So here goes. If I do the um, negative, I'm going to end up with negative 12.5 minus 36.5 divided by a negative 9.8, and I'm going to get the thing I'm solving for, which happens to be time, to equal 5.00 seconds. If I do it with the positive sign, I'm going to get a negative 12.5 plus 36.5 divided by a negative 9.8, and I'll end up with time of negative 2.45 seconds. And it does not make any sense to have a negative time from the moment of release for this to be at that location, so that is not my answer. And this is the answer. Total time from the point of release is 5 seconds. All right, um, there is another way to do this problem without the quadratic, and I am now going to do that method for those of you who go, please, no quadratic equations. So this is another method without quadratic, and this one takes a little bit more time, but it also works, and uh, you just takes it's a little bit more fiddly. So here's what's going on. So here's my helicopter. Okay and then its blades, it's 60 meters above the ground, and the package is going to go do 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 boom, and it's going to hit the ground. The other way you can do this problem is to actually cut it into pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find um, from the displacement from here to the top of the arc. The velocity at the top of my arc is going to be zero, the original velocity here is a positive 12.5, and I want to find that displacement to the top of the arc. So I'm going to say final velocity squared is original velocity squared plus 2ax. Displacement is final squared minus original squared divided by 2 times a. Final velocity at the tippy top is 0. Original velocity here was 12.5. 5 meters per second squared divided by 2 times a negative 9.8 because down is negative. Now if I do this, the displacement to the top of the arc is actually going to be 7.97 meters to the top. Okay, that is useful, but I'm not there yet because what am I after? I want to know total time in the air. So here's what I'm going to do. I am now going to find the time it takes to go from here to the tippy-tippy top. So next step, I'm going to change pen colors. I'm going to find time to the tippy-tippy top of the path. So my original velocity is positive 12.5. My final velocity is 0. Gravity is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and I want to find the time to the top of the path. So that's going to be VF equals VO plus AT times going to be final minus original divided by acceleration 
final is 0, original is 12.5 meters per second, gravity is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, so time to the tippy top is going to be 1.28 seconds. Not quite done. This is time to the top. Okay, I want to know total time in the air. So I've got one more thing to do, and that is I'm going to find time to fall from the tippy top of the arc all the way down to the bottom. I want to know how much time it's going to fall from here down, and then later I'll add the 1.28 seconds to get from here to the tippy top. Well, what's the total displacement of the fall? Well, we were told originally it's 60 meters up to where the helicopter was, and we just found out up here it's an additional 7.97 meters to the tippy top up there. So 60 meters plus 7.97 meters, so the total is 67.97 meters, and I want time to fall. So the equation I'm going to use is displacement is original velocity times time plus one half at squared. Well, at the tippy top, original velocity is zero. That's going to go to zero. Time is going to be two times x divided by a square root. Time is going to be the square root of two times 67.97 meters divided by the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, and this is negative because it's going down, but this displacement is also negative because it's going down. So those two negatives will cancel each other because you can't take the square root of a negative number. The time for this portion of the path ends up being 3.73 seconds, so the total time for the entire journey is going to be 3.73 seconds for the time for the top down, plus the 1.28 seconds from the original release to the top, and if you add those together, hot diggity dog, you get 5 seconds. So here's the problem, done two ways, one with a quadratic, one without a quadratic, and uh, they both work. So pick the method that makes the most sense in your brain. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.